get to talk about somebody interested in the aftermath of this now and who could potentially replace him. And uh, let's have a little game here. Like, I have William Hill's special market up here. I want you, I want you guys to guess the top, the top seven names who they think Ooh. could take his seat at Mercedes. There's a, uh, there's, a okay. there's a top five and there's there's a three way tie for fifth. Okay, okay, I'm, I'm right, gonna try so... to run them all down myself. Let's on, see. Oh, okay. oh, okay. okay. All right, Pascal Verlein. <laughs> Pascal Verlein is the one to two bookies favorite. Okay, uh, yep. Fernando Alonso. Yep, six to one. A- yep. Esteban Ocon. Yep, he's one. He's one of the three way, ten to one. One of the three way. Okay, who else? Uh, Valtteri Bottas. Yep, three to one. Ooh, so that's fourth yeah, favorite. Fifth one. Oh god. Sebastian Vettel. Sebastian Vettel. Yep, Vettel number four at seven to one. There's two other guys in the ten to one tiebreaker. If you, get, I'll see if you can get them. There's, 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 they're going to be a bit more difficult. Jensen Button. Yes, ten to one. And who's the final? He's ten one? to one as well. Max Verstappen. Max Verstappen. No, he's a bit lower. He's twelves. Is Hulkenberg uh, Max still Verstappen, up okay. on there? Hulkenberg at tens. Yep. Even though, like, oh, even shit. though it's been confirmed that like, it's not going to be Hulkenberg, but yeah, yeah, that that was already confirmed. That sad like, face. Yeah. Appara- <laughs> like, apparently, Mercedes had said to Renault, "Can we buy Hulkenberg's contract out?" And Renault was like, "No." And like once again, Nico Hulkenberg is going <laughs> oh, to miss out God. on a top tier seat. Oh. I'm going to jump out of a window on Hulkenberg's behalf. How unlucky must you be? Oh, <laughs> my boy. That's. Oh, that's, <laughs> that's can I just That's say, though, it's interesting we talk about contracts here um, because I have a, a little story I want to share uh, to, just to say that if people are saying that certain people are locked down by contracts, that's not yeah. necessarily a guarantee that it won't, it, that it won't happen. It, 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 now, it essentially, when they're locked down in contracts, it doesn't become a free agent negotiation. It becomes more of like a transfer negotiation. Where Yeah, what's their buyout pot price? Yeah. Uh, and it's normally very expensive, but it's not unprecedented. Like, I'm a, a huge rugby fan, and this time last year, uh, England were crashing out of their home World Cup. It was an absolute horror show. Um, their worst ever World Cup performance in their home World Cup. It was fucking horrendous to watch. As like a... Like, it, the English rugby team is one of the sports teams I've followed, like, the, like longer than even my love of AFC Wimbledon. And the thing I is, followed... like, the English, the English rugby team, they're actually decent compared to the other World Cup teams. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And they were, you know, they were, like, outside favourites maybe to win it, and they crashed out. And at the same tournament, you had a guy called Eddie Jones, who has previously coached Australia. He's Australian. He was coaching Japan. He pulled off one of the biggest shots in rugby history when they beat South Africa. Um, that was amazing. And he was basically like the hot the hot talent of the tournament in terms of coaching. So he was already signed on, I believe, to a two-year deal with the Stormers, who are a South African club. But England, after the World Cup, of course, their coach, Stuart Lancaster, walked away. He said, you know what? I take responsibility. I'm out of here. So the, the RFU said, who's a replacement? And they also looked at each other and went we got to get Eddie Jones. That guy is like the impressive coach of world rugby right now. He's like the, the top, the hot. He would be the hot free agent, except he's just started his contract with the Stormers. Well, you know what? Two weeks later, Eddie Jones is the new coach of English rugby. And it's all worked out since then. They paid off with the Stormers. But my point is, he had a two-year deal that he was starting. He had signed and he was about to start. But English rugby wanted him that bad. They got him. They, they, they were prepared to name that price. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So if Mercedes wants someone that bad, you know, it doesn't look likely to be Hulkenberg. I imagine his factory contract with Renault is not cheap at all, even for Mercedes. But if they really want someone that bad who's under contract, I think they could probably the get The only them. people I would rule out is people that are driving for Red Bull because Red yeah, Bull's got more the money. I would say you have to count out any team that's looking to make a title push. Yes. So... Ferrari, so I'd say Ferrari and Red Bull and Renault have the factory money, so probably those are off the table yeah. as well. What about someone at Force India? Force India, Sergio yes. Perez's name has been batted around. Force India, like Force India is fair game. 
McLaren Honda. That's the big question on whether Honda would look. Question, though, sorry, before we go to McLaren, people are writing off Esteban Ocon because he's just signed the contract for no, Force India. that means nothing. That means nothing. Yeah, I'm going to say, no. I'm, uh, he's not off the table yet for me because Mercedes rank him quite highly, don't exactly. they? Force India is supplied by Mercedes engines. That's why I think people are putting Bottas into in consideration as well because Williams obviously have to deal with Mercedes. I think particularly for me, any team at the moment that are supplied by Mercedes, you've got to look at their drivers. Real, 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 yeah. Because they are part of the Mercedes part system. of the reasons Valtteri Bottas is also like managed by Total Wolf himself. So there's... So yeah, like, yeah, so yeah. So yeah. Valtteri knows where his bread is buttered, so to speak. So that's why Bottas yeah. is free to one because, because again, Total Wolf is actually directly invested in Valtteri Bottas. So again, that like... Fairline seems to be like the safe pick, and again, the bookies have reflected that. Yeah. The fact he's the fact he's odds Even on. I think it's Fairline's in. The, he's in the Mercedes system. Yeah. He's a free agent, so Technically. you know he seems to be the gimme. Yeah, yeah. Uh, even though Patty Lowe says it's not a foregone conclusion that Pascal Verline will replace Rosberg, My, like. What I feel like is going to happen, it's going to be Botas in the second Mercedes seat. Then they're going to put Verline in the Williams seat because it's also been an, it's uh, Sauber have said that w- Mercedes has kind of stalled their negotiations on Verline going to the team. Ooh, yeah. Well, I wonder why. But am I right in thinking that Mercedes are getting a bit kind of cold feet? They don't want. They're not keen on putting Verline straight in the Merc yeah. seat. They don't think he's experienced. Well, if enough. they did, they wouldn't have put Ocon in the Force India seat instead of Verline. And Verline's got like 14 races more experience. They clearly are yeah. more invested in Ocon for the they're future. They're clearly more invested in Ocon. It, it seems like whoever they snatch is going to get replaced with Verline. So it's. It's number one, they pick a driver. Number two, that driver's replaced with their line. It seems like that's the way they're going. I'm going to have to put some money on Bottas to get that seat. Three to one's a good price. Um, but I mean, no, anyway, <laughs> as, I, as I was saying, like, again, like, Verline seems like the relatively safe pick according to the bookies, but Bottas, Bottas seems like a, like, shout out to Miles Depardinator for tweeting me about this one, but he seems like Bottas on a one year deal seems to be like the smart, the, seems, to be, seems to be the smart money pick here. Have Bottas for a year and see how the market plays out next year if you want to have another number one driver in your seat. Because, a lot of people have come out and said, well, you know, we're going to find out a lot about about the, the nature of what Mercedes wants in a team with this decision, whether, whether they want to have another potentially number one driver in their hood because Rosberg and Hamilton created a lot of drama either way as a partnership, no matter which way you slice it. Mostly from Hamilton's end, yeah, let's, like, be like, yeah. let, let's be honest here. Hamilton is usually the one who caused the drama unless, you know... There's going to be a Spanish guy that we're probably going to talk about later on. And, like, at at McLaren, he couldn't cause that much drama with his teammate because his teammate was Jensen Button. Everyone loves Jensen Button. You cannot exactly. hate Jensen Button. Yep. <laughs> yeah, and, like, criticism rolled off his back. Can I just, can I just ask this as well? Um, I think, you know, Hamilton trying to claim he doesn't care who his teammate is. Bullshit. <laughs> for me, yeah, absolute horse excrement. And the big thing for me, it, it kind of reminds me a bit of the situation that Graham Rahal has over in IndyCar, where his team, obviously owned by his dad, uh, Rahal Letman Lanigan, they've said time and again they'll only run a second car if it benefits the team. Now, for benefits me, I've Graham. always read that as if we yes. could exactly. They, I think Rahal would only accept a teammate if it was a. Uh, a, a, a tail gunner like a Felipe Massa or a Rubens Barrichello you know what I mean he would he would want to define number two driver I get the feeling Hamilton will be in a similar boat but the problem is Mercedes are in such an OP situation they've almost felt like they have an obligation to cut their drivers loose the last few years so like if they basically sign a definitive number two driver does that guarantee Hamilton basically runs the table and the other guy finishes second and no one's watching F1 by season end like I mean their only obligation is to win ultimately but yeah but I mean I think to be honest even like in a historical tenses manufacturers have always felt obligated to provide a good show because like let's go back if the sport didn't yeah, exist they wouldn't yeah, have a platform yeah, like, for their cars. going back to like the 68 season where um ford ford and cosworth they they originally had an exclusivity contract for the ford dfv with colin chapman and lotus but they realized the dfv was going to be so op that lotus would run away with the championship that they found a loophole in their exclusivity contract to make it available to everyone <laughs> 
Nice. And that became the standard engine of F1 for about the next five years, didn't it? That was an incredible power plant. The next decade. Yeah, exactly. Um, So, and I I think as well, what will be interesting, you know, we've talked time and again about Valentino Rossi on this show, (laughs) about how... I don't know if you can see where I'm going with this. Basically, we've said before that Valentino Rossi, he's friends with you until you start beating him. So Hamilton's going to be fine with whoever he picks as a teammate until he starts beating him. Yeah. Yeah. That's when things are going to start getting really interesting. In in real talk, if that man really is Fernando Alonso, who, by the way, Toto Wolff has always said would be the number one replacement if one of their drivers was to depart, he's always said Fernando would be his number one pick. Just a thought. Really, though? Yeah. He said that publicly like two years ago. He said straight up, if one of his drivers was ever to depart, his number one pick for a replacement would be Fernando Alonso. <laughs> even though, even though, like things have sort of changed because, uh, like uh, Doctor Z, the the chairman at at Daimler Benz, he's always said that he would veto any Alonso return because of what happened in 2007. Yeah, that's well, back, the thing, back in 07, of course, Mercedes were supplying McLaren. Yeah. So. And, and Fernando Alonso directly sabotaged the team in Hungary that 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 weekend. So yeah, like. I don't see the Fernando one as a lot of other people do, but no, I think that's more in the stat. That's like the Jensen Button one. But imagine one. the fireworks. I think it's more a sentimental yeah. one. Oh yeah. So could I just say, let's put our cards down on the table here. What are our predictions? Bottas. Ooh. Yeah. So you're going Bottas, King. Bottas yeah, on I wanna... a, but Bottas on a one-year deal. <laughs> Yeah, I, I okay. want to. I want to go Botas. Like my probably my cover for that would be Ocon, with the implication of whoever goes to Mercedes, they're getting replaced with um, uh, they're getting replaced with uh, Pascal Verlaine at their previous team. Verlaine, yeah. yeah, I think I. Damn it! I was going to go for Ocon. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm thinking. I'm, th- I'm thinking Botas, and I'm thinking on a one year deal, and we have this conversation this time next year as to who get Botas, who gets Botas's seat, unless unless Botas wins the world title in which case well that's going to be fun <laughs> oh my god <laughs> that'll be so, hilarious uh, that's that's you know that that could be a, a-